Hello! Here, I'm going to explain why the multiverse, if it even exists, is fine-tuned. But before we could explain that, we need to first explain that the universe is itself fine-tuned. This means that there are these physical constants that are programmed into the laws of physics that dictate the exact behavior of our universe. If the values that they had were a little larger or a little smaller, no life could exist. So how do you explain that we have the exact physical constants that permit life? Well, one answer is that we exist in a multiverse. The idea is that many, many universes exist in this broader multiverse, all with different values for the physical constants in those universes. Most of the universes would be hostile to life, but some would, purely by chance, happen to support life. And our universe is one of those life-friendly guys according to this theory. Now, to get into why the multiverse fails to explain the fine-tuning, things are going to get pretty mathy. For this video, we're going to start out with a seemingly unrelated math puzzle, which is interesting enough in of itself, and it will play a part later on in the argument against the multiverse. Let's start off things with the infinite fair lottery paradox. Say we have infinite cards labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on to infinity. We turn the cards over and shuffle them randomly. They're shuffled so thoroughly that no matter which card you turn over, every number is equally likely to appear. Is this scenario possible? Probably not. Here's some reasons why. Imagine the following. Alice and Bob, two perfectly rational human beings, were given a bet by Charlie. Charlie gives Alice and Bob each a card from the deck without anybody seeing the numbers on the cards. Charlie says he will give $100 to the person with the highest number on their card. Alice and Bob agree to the bet, so Charlie lets them look at their cards. Bob sees his card and immediately gets sad. He knows that there are only finitely many cards with a value smaller than his card, but there are infinitely many cards with a larger value on them. So the chance that Alice has a card that is larger than his card is essentially 100%. Now Alice looks at her card too, and by the same logic deduces that Bob has almost certainly won. For there are finitely many cards with a smaller number and infinitely many cards with a larger number. So both Alice and Bob are certain that they have lost. Now Charlie offers them a deal. If they pay him $99.99, then he will get them to switch cards. They both jump at this opportunity because they are both certain that they have lost. That's really strange. Where was the flaw in their logic? Next, Charlie draws three cards from the deck and lays them in a row. Then he asks you what the chances are that they are in ascending order. What's the chance that the smallest is on the left and the largest is on the right? Well, the classic way to calculate this is multiply one-third by one-half by one-one-th. This is one over three factorial, or one-sixth. You could shuffle the cards all you want and the probability isn't affected. So Charlie flips over the first number and shows it to you. He then asks you the probability that the next number is larger. You reason that there are finitely many smaller numbers and infinitely many larger numbers. So the chance that the next number is larger is essentially 100%. Charlie then flips over the next card and asks you again what the probability is that the next card he turns over will be larger. You, by the same reasoning, conclude that the probability that the next card will be larger is 100%. Now, here's the weird thing. Your certainty that the next card would be larger was always 100%. However, if the next card is always larger, then the cards are in ascending order. So the probability that the cards are in ascending order is 100%. But now we've reached a contradiction. It seems then that this whole scenario is actually impossible. Nope, it's bad, can't happen, it breaks math. Now, onto the multiverse stuff. When talking about the fine-tuning, I'm going to keep our discussion to the gravitational constant. Its value is 6.67408 times 10 to the negative 11th times meters cubed divided by kilograms times seconds squared. That's a mouthful, so I'm just going to say its value is 6 units. For a universe to support life, it needs to have a gravitational constant, which is really close to 6 units. So, if there is a multiverse, there's some sort of universe-making device or process or whatever generating universes. How does it assign different values of the gravitational constant to different universes? Well, here's an idea. A random value between 0 and 10 is chosen for each universe. If enough universes are created, then eventually one universe will be created with the correct gravitational constant around the value of 6. But this model of the multiverse isn't actually very good. Why are values being chosen between 0 and 10? Why not 0 and 5? If this was the way the multiverse generated universes, then no life-supporting universe would be created. Ugh, sad face. Basically, if values are chosen between 0 and some upper bound x, then x cannot be much smaller than 6. But since x has this restriction, x seems 
fine-tuned, quote-unquote, itself. So, Mr. Atheist Skeptic Person, it seems like there was an agent who plugged in which value of x the multiverse operates off of, whatever the value is, if there is even a multiverse. The only way the atheist can sidestep this apparent design is if they can avoid the apparent arbitrariness in the upper bound on the possible values of the gravitational constant spat out by the multiverse generation process. Saying it's a special number like 1, pi, or e won't work because the units are themselves arbitrary. However, even if all the numbers would be arbitrary, the atheist could go with a value of x bigger than all numbers. Infinity! There is no upper bound on the values of the gravitational constant, and in the infinity of universes created, some happen to fall in the life-permitting range. But, this raises a problem. This setup allows us to construct an infinite fair lottery. You could pair up infinitely many equally sized intervals of possible constants with cards labeled 1 to infinity. The multiverse picking values is less equivalent to the seemingly impossible infinite fair lottery scenario. Even if you're willing to bite that bullet, I'm also going to mention in passing that there would seem to be far fewer universes which are fine-tuned than universes with Boltzmann brains thinking that they're in fine-tuned universes. Moving on, the atheists can counter that these paradoxes occur only if each interval is equally likely to be chosen for the value of a gravitational constant. If the probability distribution of the possible gravitational constant follows the formula 2 over the square root of pi times e to the power of negative x squared, where x is in units, then we can avoid the infinite fair lottery. If you're unfamiliar with this kind of equation, the basic idea is that there is some curve that graphs the probability of getting a given value, and the higher a part is of the curve, the more likely that that value is to be spat out by the random process. Now, the problem with this probability distribution here is that this is a very arbitrary equation. There seems to be no reason to have this probability distribution rather than some other one. And, some probability distributions would make it impossible for any life-permitting universes to be generated, since the height of the function modeling the distribution would be zero there. But then, the probability distribution has restrictions it must meet for life-permitting universes to be generated. This makes the probability distribution itself fine-tuned. We could have gotten one that led to no life-permitting universes, but that didn't happen. So, Mr. Atheist, if there was a multiverse, it seems to have a made-by-God label on it. To recap, it seems like a designer plugged in specific values for various physical constants in our universe. If you want to try to explain this with a multiverse, you're going to need some sort of probability distribution for the various constants to avoid problems like infinite fair lotteries, Boltzmann brains, or arbitrary upper bounds. But it seems like a designer plugged in specific values for these functions as well. So the multiverse doesn't get rid of fine-tuning, it just switches one kind of fine-tuning for another. This means that we shouldn't be very confident about the usefulness of the multiverse in debates about fine-tuning. Whew, that was a lot of math. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed.